over the past several days, um, you might have seen s some stories in the news saying things similar to this. This is from Forbes. It says Pfizer BioNTech vaccine appears to work against the new COVID variant study finds as U.S. records deadliest day. Um, that title is probably a very optimistic and inaccurate conclusion to draw from this study. It talks about this new research. Um, that So there's been a couple of studies that kind of give us information on whether the vaccine is, should work with the new variants or not. And this is the study that they're referencing right here. So this is a joint venture uh, between Pfizer and University of uh, Texas. So Pfizer here and Texas here. And what they did is they um, did a mutation at the 501 position. And so the way you interpret this thing is you remember that... Um, the spike protein is what's used in both the Moderna and the Pfizer mRNA vaccine. They use the full-length spike protein, which is 1273 amino acids. So there's this is the receptor binding domain. That's the part that actually binds the ACE2. And at position 501, which is around here, um, they did a mutation from N to Y. And so N to Y means it was an asparagine, and they changed it to a tyrosine. So that's the mutation that exists. And if you look at, this is the B117 UK mutant, there's a N to Y at 501 right here. And then if you look at, this is the, um, the South African variant, the 501.V2, there is an N to Y at 501. So they both share this mutation. And so they made a virus with that mutation and then they tested it against um, one of their uh, sub, one of their uh, patients that they tried put the vaccine into, and the and it, the patient developed neutralizing antibodies against the wild type. They used that and tested it against this virus that they made that had a mutation at that spot, and it still worked. So that's good news. Um, but. What that means is they tested a virus that has one single point mutation. And what the, the, um, the South African one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, ten mutations in the spike protein. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mutations in the spike protein. So they only tested one of the uh, mutations. So they don't know, they can't say definitively, if you put in all these mutations, would it work? So I don't really know why they did it this way. I'm not, I'm not sure why they didn't just get the, um, the virus from the, the UK variant and the South African variant and just test it. But instead, they decided to test a point mutation. Um, so yeah, if it had a single point mutation, you could take this study and say, yes, it, def it, it should work. Um, but... Uh, you don't know if it'll work if it has the other mutation. So there's a couple, there's two other studies that have come out. This is a study out of Seattle. And what they did is a comprehensive muta mutational analysis. And the way they did this study is they took a spike protein and they put it in what's called a yeast library. And they mutated every possible, they did every possible mutation. Um, but they were all single point mutations. And then they tested that against convalescent serum. So convalescent serum is a patient that's had um, COVID-19 and they fought it off. So they have antibodies against it. They tested it against that. And what they found is that there is an important site at E484. So looking back at the structure that's still in the receptor binding domain, 484 is like about here. And that is um, originally a glutamate. So E here. And so if you look at the UK variant, there is no mutation at 484. So this one does not have that mutation. That's the mutation that they found when they scanned all the possible mutations. Um, but they only did one mutation at a time as well, but they scanned kind of the entire length of the spike protein. They found the E, the E, the glutamate at 484 to be the most important. If you look at the um, the South African variant, there is a point mutation at E484. Um, it becomes a lysine. So it becomes from a glutamate to a lysine. And so this one has this important mutation that, according to this study, 
um, affects the ability of neutralizing serum to work. Now, there's a third paper out of Italy in uh, San Diego and Texas and a couple other places. What they did here is very interesting. They took the wild type virus, then they found a convalescent serum that was very active against the wild type virus, and then they cultured the virus over many passages. So they let the virus grow with very small amounts of this convalescent serum in the presence to apply selection pressure to it so that it would mutate. And then after about seven passages, so over 45 days, the virus mutated in culture. And at day um, 73, it developed naturally this E to K uh, mutation, which is the exact mutation in the South African variant right here. It developed that, and then it developed another mutation in the N-terminal domain. So the N-terminal domain is this front part right here between um, amino acids 13 to 305. So... Oops. So it, yeah, it developed an insertion in the N-terminal domain, and that generated a variant that was completely resistant to plasma neutralization. So that's not good news. Um, so what what I take from this is that basically there is there are mutations that will allow the virus to escape. Um, at least humoral immunity, so that's immunity from antibodies. So there, there's another part of adaptive immunity called uh, with that runs through the T cell. So that's um, cellular immunity, and this these papers don't test cellular immunity; they only test humoral immunity. So they want they test if the um, generated antibodies can neutralize the virus. So we can't comment on cellular immunity, but in terms of humoral immunity, this um, 484 position, the glutamate, the 484 position, seems to be important because both in this paper and this uh, yeast um, mutational library paper, they found the 484 position to be very important. So this, uh, a change in this probably changes the conformation or the shape of the protein so that the antibodies that are the best epitopes no longer bind well to it. So this paper that all the popular press are talking about did not mutate that, um, the 484 position. It just mutated the 501 position, the receptor binding domain. Um, and it works for that. But the problem is, is there are many other mutations in these variants. And the, uh, especially the South African variant has this 484 mutation, which seems to be an important mutation in terms of um, being responsive to humoral immunity. So um, I think what this means probably, if I were to guess, and this is not definitive, is that uh, it's possible that the South African variant may be somewhat resistant to the current uh, vaccines. And we kind of are in a bad position globally because right now um, the prevalence of the virus is quite high. That means that there's a large and robust population of virus uh, in the general population. And so there's probably a lot of genetic ver diversity out there. And now we are vaccinating people slowly. And so we're slowly applying selection pressure, which is exactly basically what they did in this study, where they just slowly increased the amount of convalescent plasma that they were subjecting this virus to over a long time. See, if they gave the full titer of the convalescent um, uh, uh, convalescent plasma to the virus, it would just neutralize it all completely and it would never replicate. But they slowly just ratcheted up the selection pressure. So what they're doing in vitro is, is kind of what we're doing on the global scale. We're just slowly increasing pressure by, by uh, vaccinating people slowly. If we just vaccinated the entire world all at once in one day, ideally, we would just apply maximum pressure to it all at once and we could probably shut the thing down. But right now, we have a large, robust population of virus in the population with a lot of genetic diversity. And then we're slowly applying selection pressure by slowly rolling out this vaccine. And so what that probably means, unfortunately, is that it is going to um, try to select for a virus that can evade um, the vaccine. Now, what I'm hoping is the case is that um, cellular immunity works differently and the combination of the two may be able to overcome this and it may still work. So the jury is still out on whether it 100% will work 
Um, we just won't know until like the epidemiological data comes out uh, from the vaccinated people. But there is a lot more information now than there was two weeks ago when we first heard about the variants. So I hope uh, that was somewhat useful. And uh, if you have any questions, comment below. And thanks for watching.